time for my first batch of pickles after returning to the Tampa Bay area. These are from a local organic farm. I snatched a bunch of them, so I'm gonna be cutting those up. And we've got local fresh garlic. Oh, smells heavenly. And this is a Mexico sea salt, Sal Real de Colima. So we're gonna be using some of that, a couple of, couple of big old bay leaves. Wow. And I've got some dill seed, organic dill seed, organic mustard seed, a couple of jars. We've got the salt in there. So um, after watching a YouTuber who really specialized in ferments, she had a few different recipes, but I believe it was for every two cups of water, one tablespoon of salt. So this is probably not gonna fit two, so I put a little bit less than a tablespoon of salt. I don't mind really salty ferments because I like to put them in salads, like little bits. Um, but obviously when it's like overly, overly salty, it's not good. But when it's like under salty, it's not great either. So we are gonna be uh, getting that. I'm gonna put some water in it and get the, the salt dissolved a little bit. I remember when I was first making ferments and I didn't do this step, what would happen is that the salt would just collect in one area and it wouldn't ferment evenly. So that was a little bit of a hard lesson learned. So we'll do that, get that going, get these chopped up and we will come back. Okay, I'm back, it's all cut. I've been munching on them, of course, and then I have some of my greens on the side. I like to just munch on greens, you know? That's just how I am. So I've made, I don't know how many batches, well over 10 batches, and I probably have learned a few things, but one of the key things that I have learned is when I see cucumbers with a lot of seeds like that, it tends to be much softer, and sometimes they're a little tangy, as opposed to ones with very little or no seeds, they hold up really well in the ferment and they don't get all like mushy, right? So there wasn't a ton like that, but I would say this kind like that is the best. Like that, where the seeds are not showing and they look pretty different like these it's been a while since I've gotten them, so I should have paid more attention, but the uh, farmer was throwing them in my bag as I was there at the end. She's like, oh yeah, you can have these. See how round it is? There's like gonna be quite, I can cut this for you and show you. There's gonna be quite a bit of seeds in there. I can already tell. I wish I would have saved the one um, that was not super seedy. Do you see that? Lots of seeds, um, lots of gelatinous, um, center as opposed to this it's pretty it's pretty stiff so it's gonna hold up really really well in the ferment so I'm um, probably gonna just keep these for my salads and then the next time around I will make sure I keep my eye on ones that look more like this um, it's really hard to say they're slimmer sometimes they're like slim and then they go out a little bit but they feel different they don't feel as they don't have as much give and like there's so much water content in them. Okay, so I've thrown the bay leaves, the garlic, and there's about a cup of water in these right now. And then I just throw a dash of the other stuff that I like. So that's the dill seed and then the mustard. And this is probably already way too many cucumbers as is. Put this up here so you guys can see it. And then I was gonna see how much it filled it so then I can determine how much more water and salt to add. This is almost perfect. You can do spears, you can do whatever you like, but definitely don't fill it up too tall. And I have fermentation weights and I have these lids as well, which you don't really need. I will get the weights and then, um, I think it has enough salt. Although what I'm gonna do, just in case it's diluted, is put a little bit more salt on the top 
which I think also helps to keep the bacteria out a little bit more. This is my distilled water. I've got my distiller right behind me, which I will show you in a second. It's the pure water distiller. So that's right there. And then let me grab the other things and come right back. Okay, so here's the other little gadgets. So I have ones like this, which are thicker and they have the little handles and then I have others like this. Maybe I got these first and I didn't like them as much. You can see how much thicker they are. And then the handle you can see is a, it's, it's pretty slim and thin, right? So I like these better. And this is more for making kraut so you can really pound that. And I think that what I'm gonna do is put some Urban Mare on top. Now you could also use like um, a cabbage leaf There we go. And I caught a lot of the dill seed, so I'm just pouring that out. All right, and then these lids, basically you can release the air, but you can also put in the month and the date on there. But I've used all sorts of lids, and honestly it doesn't make that much of a difference. But when I was first starting out, I wanted to get, you know, all the little things just to, to try it. Okay, so that's it. Pickles, we've got the bay leaves, we've got the garlic, dill seeds, mustard seeds, you can do whatever you want. Fresh dill would be amazing, of course. Some onions, I usually put onions, but I didn't put any this time, so. Um, it's been a minute in terms of how long it actually takes. The key thing you could do is open it up, taste it after a few days, you know, how's the texture, um, you know, what does it taste like? Because some people like things, you know, different textures, different levels of salt, different levels of fermentation. So it's really up to your preference and you can go in there, you know, get um, ideally a non-metal um, thing. So I could use something like some organic bamboo chopsticks and you can just go in there and give it a taste, right? I've got organic bamboo forks, um, a silicone thing. And then from there you can keep going or not. Um, it's better to catch it before it's overly fermented and depending on how much humidity, you know, what the temperature is like, it, it varies. So because I'm in Florida, it's gonna probably be ready much sooner. And I don't think I did ferments no, I did have not done ferments only in the Ozark. So this is going to be really a new learning experience. And then before this video, I made my first batch of Young Thai coconut coconut yogurt, which I actually have here. And according to the recipe, uh, when it's hot, this could be done in about seven to eight hours, just right here on the counter, not in the dehydrator, um, nothing like that. So I've got my first batch of cocoa yo and my first batch of pickles and we'll see how things go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know what your favorite ferments are. How do you do your pickles? Do you have any little tips and tricks um, that you know we can all learn from? Ciao. After five days, it's time to taste the pickles. I had it in the fridge. I already tasted the other batch a few days ago and we are going to take the lid off take the weight, the fermentation weight. And I did discover exactly as I had mentioned that the cucumbers, which had more seeds, the centers came out because it's it just gets too soft. So I had dug into the other batch and tried them and then all the centers of those type started to come out. But let me show you how good these other ones hold up. So this is the type of pickle you want, right? It's much darker, let me just show you. 
than say this. Look at the difference in the color. Okay, this still has the center, but it's very soft. It's practically coming apart. Okay, so I'll taste that for you. It's got a nice tanginess. Now when you put your ferments in the fridge, it kind of mellows it out if you don't like too much of that fermented taste. Okay, so a lot of this is holding up. So what I like to do is because all of the seasonings are at the bottom, I try to really dig in there and mix it all around. But in this case, it's gonna break some of these cucumbers, but that's okay. It's all good. See like that, how there's ba it's basically has holes in it, right? It's still decent. It's just not what you want in a pickle. And I got a few other ones and they look the same. So it's not super easy to find them. Like that one doesn't compare to the difference, right? Um, so five days, it's got, it's got a really, it's got a strong tang. So it probably could have been done on day four, day three, but a lot of it's just based on your own preference. So yeah, that's, and I'll taste this one for you. This one is going to be perfect. Mm, even that, no, it's a little soft. I've had cucumber, the pickles just turn out absolute perfect flavor, perfect salt, perfect crunchiness and texture. So, you know, it's all, it's all about getting that art and science down. Um, I also just tasted the young Thai coconut yogurt that I made the same day, which I'll link down below. And I tasted it with some Madagascar vanilla bean powder and Yacon syrup, some raw Yacon syrup. So I made these two the same day. Uh, this took 20, actually was supposed to take 24 hours, but it ended up taking 48 hours. And then this was five days, but it could have been done much sooner. So yeah, let me know if you have any pickle tips, how you like to make your pickles what you like to put in them, always learning about all things ferments. And I actually have um, a lovely gal who sells at the St. Pete Farmer's Market. I'm doing a podcast with her and she makes the best booch, the most unique krauts. And she um, uses the local and organic veggies from the farms that are at the farmer's market. And she, like she has saffron turnips, a, a leek. Who's ever seen leek kraut? It's incredible. So. Yeah, once that's out, I will link it below as well. Ciao.